Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 23rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Santa Monica, California. TLS 1.3 is the most current and already reasonably well-supported version of TLS. It does offer a number of security and privacy, but also performance improvements over older versions of TLS, in particular TLS 1.2, which is uh, at this point really the oldest TLS version that you should still support. But what's still a bit of a problem is testing actually if you have TLS 1.3 enabled and if it is correctly configured with the right set of ciphers. Most notably, the Nmap TLS testing script doesn't yet support TLS 1.3, which also may be a little bit of a problem with OpenSSL. OpenSSL only supports TLS 1.3 as a version 1.1.1, which isn't yet sort of common with with some currently still used Linux distributions. To help you with this, Boyan listed in his diary today two options that you have to support, to check for TLS version 1.3 support. The probably simplest way is just to use OpenSSL's client module directly. Again, that requires that you have version 1.1.1 installed. The other option you have is the testSSL.sh script that's coming from GitHub and also has TLS version 1.3 support. And before you roll out TLS 1.3 in particular on your web service, double check that your middle box is supported correctly so you don't run into any problems and will actually reap some of the benefit of using TLS 1.3. And we got an update for Google Chrome. Now, this update fixes, as usual, a number of security updates, but one of the sort of highlights that's not actually a security patch is the beginning support for DNS over HTTPS. Of course, Mozilla with Firefox has been a little bit a trailblazer here for this protocol. Now, Google is trying to do a little bit more measured approach Approach with DNS over HTTPS. With Firefox, you're sort of being pushed to the use of uh, Cloudflare for your DNS resolver. The way Google Chrome does it is it checks if you are already using a resolver that does support DNS over HTTPS and has a list of about six or seven, I believe, different resolvers that it is sort of adding to its list of known supporters of DNS over HTTPS. Only in this case, it will then start using DNS over HTTPS to whatever resolve or whatever provider of DNS services you are already using. So if you already use Cloudflare, then the Google Chrome will start using Cloudflare over HTTPS. And Mozilla also released a new version of Firefox. And now some of the notable changes in addition, of course, to fixes to vulnerabilities are a better social tracking protection, also more reports on which trackers Firefox blocks. And uh, one little challenge actually that uh, people put out there is to find websites that use more than 70 trackers that Firefox version 70 will block. So if you wanna participate in that, I would be interested to see what the maximum number of trackers are that you can identify on particular websites using this new feature. Firefox now also added a breach notification feature. If you visit a website that was recently compromised, there will be an alert to basically tell you that you probably should change your credentials for this particular site. Firefox also includes sort of a complex password generation feature. So if you don't already have kind of password wallet or so that does take care of this, you could use Firefox itself. 
And two researchers from the Technical University of Cologne did uh, publish a paper outlining a new way to actually launch a denial of service attack against websites that are behind specific type of caching proxy servers. Of course, uh, part also public caching proxy servers like, for example, Cloudflare are affected, but this not only affects these large public proxies, also some proxies that people set up in their own networks, like for example, Varnish or Nginx and the like. The trick is actually fairly straightforward and not all that difficult to conduct. What you do is as an attacker, you are requesting a resource that will be cached, but you are adding an additional header that triggers an error message from the original web server. So the proxy server will forward this request to the web server. The web server will respond with an error page that will then be cached in the proxy server. If later another user is requesting the same resource, well, they will just get the cached error page from the proxy. Interesting little attack. We'll have to see how applicable it really is. But they did identify a large number of sites that are vulnerable to this. And for example, some versions of these attacks, in particular, if you are running, for example, IIS uh, behind Varnish, behind behind Akamai, even behind CloudFront, are vulnerable to some of these attacks. According to the HTTP standard, the error message coming back from the web server 400 bad request should actually not be cached at all. As an administrator running a web server that's behind a vulnerable cache server here, you could just add a cache control header asking the proxy not to store uh, the reply. Or of course, if you are able to manage uh, the proxy server, the proxy server really should block uh, these requests. Well, and is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.